To get access to the drip rail, we're gonna to need to remove the factory trim piece. It's a stamped aluminum part and you'll have to pry it up out of the way to get access to the rail underneath it. It's got some plastic clips that hold it in place and they run actually good. This one stayed, it popped out of the retainer. So if you see that right there, it's stuck around that pin and I don't wanna break this thing. So if you work your pry tool around it, you can pop it out so that if you ever go to put these back in, uh, you can just snap the trim back together after you take the roof rack off. Now that we've got the factory trim piece out of the way, we can see the drip rail. You'll see the little studs that stand up that used to hold the trim in place. Those are going to stay. The spine brace that we send to attach the roof rack to the truck is actually machined to go around those and they help locate it. So I'm doing this on the passenger side. So I've got the spine brace that has a P on it. And you'll notice the small little machined rectangles. Those align around those studs all the way through to the front of the vehicle to help locate this thing. You wanna take the spine, push it all the way. See how it will slide? Push it all the way to the back to where the tail end of it touches the spoiler on the back of the truck. That's the right position for this. Now we'll take and mark every one of these small holes through here. And that's where we'll drill it to install the rivets. Just go all the way from the rear to the front, hold it in place, use a marker to mark the holes. There are nine on each side. Um, that you'll use. Now I've got those holes marked. It's blue, so it may be hard to see in the video, but I've marked every location and now we'll come back and we'll drill those with the stop collar and the 3 16 inch drill bit in your kit. We've set the depth on the stop collar at about a half an inch. That's more than enough to get through the sheet metal in the drip rail and not enough to do any damage to the headliner or anything laying underneath it. It allows you to drill this hole blind without dropping the headliner uh, and checking to see what's underneath there. We've already done that for you and we're telling you half inch, good to go. So we'll locate a hole. Now, the rest of the holes will go the exact same way. Like we said before, nine per side. So go ahead and drill all the holes on the driver and passenger side and then we'll be ready to install the foam barrier and rivet the plates to the drip rails. Once you've got all your holes drilled, just clean the metal shavings out of the drip rail, wipe it down real good, make sure there's no more metal shaving in the drip rail. We don't want them to rust. So we like to use a magnet. It just picks them up without scratching anything. Once you've got the drip rail cleared out, locate the foam strip that came with your kit and a pair of scissors. And you're gonna cut this to length to go over top of each location where you drilled and you'll, you'll run it full length in between those rivets. You don't wanna poke it down over the rivet because it'll make it tight in the rectangle in the spine. But a little small section at the rear like that. And then the next one I'll run from there and I'll cut it just on the other side of the drill hole. We're gonna work our way down the entire truck like that. Using this foam seal allows you to put the spine brace on without using silicone. You'll still have to seal the rivet heads when you're done, but it keeps it from making a huge mess in this track. We've got the foam applied at each location over where we drilled the truck. You'll see where we skipped over the rivets. We've got it in the channel. There's a gap in the middle. There are no holes here, so there's no reason to apply any foam tape in that, that section and then all the way up to the front, and then finally for the front foot. Now that we've got that done, we'll use the spine brace in location and a pick tool to puncture where those rivets go, and then we'll be ready to install the rivets. Drop the spine brace into the drip rail, and then use a pick tool to align each hole for the rivet. You can see we've got each hole punched. That's gonna make it easy to align where the rivet should go when we're ready to attach the spine brace. To attach the spine brace to the drip rail of the truck, we're gonna use a standard rivet gun. We have one with a swivel head, but yours doesn't have to have that. And then the rivets included with your kit. 
you just slide the stem inside of the rivet gun and when you compress this, see it start to swell there? If it was between two layers of metal right now, you would hear a pop noise and this swelled up part would pull up against the bottom of the drip rail of your truck and that's what's gonna secure the spine. So now we'll put those in. We've got the back three rivets in so far. I'll show you here. They're attached at the, the rear and then this one, and this is just this one foot. So it should be very secure at this point. Now you're just gonna work your way down and install the rest of the rivets. When you get to the front, see how it's a straight line and the, and the drip rail curves off? You'll need to manipulate it back down like you did when you drew it to get the hull to align. At the front, you'll need to pull the spine down into the drip rail to get it to take the contour of the truck. Then you can install the last two rivets. Now we've got the entire spine on the passenger side installed. Go back and repeat the process on the driver's side, then you'll be ready to attach your load bar anchors. All that's left is to apply some silicone to the exposed rivet heads to keep moisture out of the interior of the vehicle. Then we'll be ready to assemble and install our load bar clamps. We use an exterior grade RTV silicone. It doesn't matter if it's white or clear or black. Um, what matters is it is RTV and it's exterior grade pure silicone. Put it over the top of each rivet head. Make sure that it's sealed up with your hand. When you've completed your install, don't take this thing through a car wash for the first 48 hours to allow the sealant time to cure. Each load bar clamp will get three sets of hardware and one threaded insert. See the protrusion on the insert? It needs to face the inside of the load bar so that it slides into the channel of the load bar. If it's stuck this way, it physically doesn't fit in that track. That's how you would know that you had that backwards. Each one of these gets a bolt, a lock washer, and a flat washer. And then just align it through the slot and start the hardware by hand. So I get them started. You want that play right there because you're gonna need this loose so you can slide the load bars across the vehicle. Go ahead and set every one of them up. You have eight for your truck, so go ahead and set all eight of them up just like this. All eight feet for this truck are the exact same, which means that when you put them on one side of the truck, the bolts are gonna face the front. When you put them on the other side of the truck, they'll face the rear. It doesn't matter which foot you use in which location. It will matter which set of holes you align to the spine, and we'll go over that in a minute. But I wanna talk about the foot to, to rack hardware here. We're installing this rack on an alpha and we'll be using the hex head bolts for this connection. So it'd be hex head bolt washer. This piece goes on the outside. It does not go on the inside. It goes on the outside of the spine and then the bolt passes through and then the nylock goes through. You wanna make sure that the washer is on the outside because the holes are larger in this part than they are in this part to allow these to articulate back to square to connect to the load bar without uh, getting into a bind. And so the washer has to go on the outside and the nylock goes in. If you're installing it to a Bravo rack, the only difference in that entire thing is that you get button head hardware to go through. So button head, flat washer, through the clamp, and then nylock on the back side of it. Like I said, we're putting this on an alpha rack, so I'm gonna go and I'm gonna put these into position. Then I'll come back and talk about the locations. And when you get ready to do yours, you just put the hardware in the place that we tell you. The rear foot goes in the third hole from the top. So, see that right there? Third hole. So there's two empty holes above, one empty hole below. You wanna leave them loose like this so that they can articulate. It's gonna make it way easier to slide the load bars across when you're putting this rack on by yourself. One of the last things you'll do will be to come back and tighten up all this hardware at this location. Again, this is an alpha, so it has hex nuts. If it was a Bravo, it would have the button head bolts. The rear one, you'll have two exposed holes. The next one, you'll have one. The third foot from the rear, you'll have two again. And then the very front one, it will be in the bottom to allow it to stand all the way up to get the height to clear the sunroof. That may seem confusing, but it's it literally follows the contour of the truck. And that's why some feet need to be higher or lower than others. There's a nice flat spot right here. That's why this is the lowest foot. I've got all eight load bar clamps on now, four on the driver's side, four on the passenger side. 
Now we'll be ready to feed the load bars across. This step is the same for the Alpha and the Bravo. You'll always start with these four load bars and then you would anchor your, your groove tack or your Bravo sides. Uh, first, we'll be doing the Bravo and then we'll pull it apart and we'll do the Alpha rack on it as well. Line up the slot in the side of the load bar to the threaded insert on the load bar foot and just slide it across to the other side of the truck. Now, unless you're Chuck Norris, you're probably not gonna be able to hit both sides by yourself. But if you look, I've got that side setting and this side is in. So we're gonna do the same thing for these three locations. Then I'll go over there and feed them back and get them lined up. Then we'll center them left to right and then we'll loosely attach the sides. Now feed the load bars through. I've got all four of them. They're only slid through on the passenger side right now. I'll have to go to the other side and kind of move them back and forth to get the other threaded insert. But you'll see how on the passenger side, it's on the back of the bar. And on the driver's side, it's on the front of the bar. Um, you don't actually get to pick that. That just depends on how they were bent in production. Now I'm gonna set the driver's side. I'm anchored on the passenger side over there. So you just kind of jiggle it around and you should be able to free it up to slide to the driver's side of the vehicle. With all four load bars started, I'm just gonna take a loose measurement from the outside edge of the load bar clamp to the outside edge of the load bar on both sides of the truck and make sure that I have them pretty close to even. I'll make final adjustments once the sides are attached, but doing that, make sure that you have this sticking out far enough when you go to put the side on that it doesn't come into contact with the uh, exterior of the truck. With the four load bars in the roof, we're ready to attach the driver's side to the truck. Grab your load bar hardware, 5 30 seconds Allen wrench, and a stool so you can reach it. The side will align to the load bars, like you see here. You're gonna skip this rear position. Your rear load bar that's on the roof will attach to the second groove from the rear. With the hardware started in every location that you have a load bar, find the fourth slot from the front. This is the, the alignment slot. And make sure that that one is fully seated all the way back. Tighten this one first, then go back and tighten the front and the midsection and the rear one. You're gonna do the same thing on the other side with the passenger side armor plate. Then you'll be ready to install the remaining load bars in the empty slots. I've got all the load bars seated all the way forward now. That makes the rack level on there, even with the, the driver and passenger side. So it's set in square on the roof of the truck. Now I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna add the remaining load bars. And then I'll come back finally and tighten up the hardware here. And then we'll tighten up the, the foot hardware. Now I've got all four load bars attached to the armor on the driver and passenger side. You'll notice that all the load bar slots are fully forward. They're locked in all the way at the front. That makes the rack even on the driver and passenger side. Now I'm gonna lift up on this and get this, the top of this uh, load bar clamp flush with the load bar and tighten those up and then we'll tighten up the feet. The rear load bar can be mounted horizontally along this slot or vertically using the rear of this slot and this lower hole. The reason that you'd wanna do that is that the load bars have deflection when they're mounted like this, but if you flip them on their side, they're infinitely stronger. And at the back of the rack, you may be attaching heavier gear. That would be a good way to run this vertically. We don't need it for antenna clearance or anything crazy like that. So on this truck, we're gonna run it horizontally, just like the rest of them. We've got all the load bars in now, except for the front one. We like to leave that one out until after you put the windscreen in. It just allows more room to get tools in there to tighten up the windscreen. So I'll tighten up the feet now to the rack. You'll have to reach inside those areas. On the Alpha, you'll need a pair of half inch wrenches. On the Bravo, you'll need a five millimeter Allen wrench and a 13 millimeter end wrench. The windscreen can be installed with one person. You just want a moving blanket to sit over the top of the truck. The holes in the end of the windscreen here and here will align to the last two holes at the front of the Bravo rack. So I'm gonna set up my blanket and get my hardware and then I'll show you guys how to put this thing in by yourself. So I just pull the blanket back and tuck it so it can't slide down. That's gonna let me set the windscreen up here and work on one side and then the other. Aligning the hardware is a whole lot easier with that front load bar out. So don't put that in until your, your windscreen's already in the truck. Once you've got that on, leave the hardware loose. That way you can just easily drop the front load bar in and bolt it in. 
Then come back and tighten up the hardware and you can pull the moving blanket out now. So this is inside the windscreen. You've got lock nuts inside of here. And for the Bravo rack, you need a 3 16 and a half inch. On the Alpha rack, obviously we'll talk about that later in the video. It attaches to the groove tack and it is metric. So five millimeter and 3 16 But you can see how much clearance you have around your antenna. And that when you have your front load bar in, if you put it at the back position, it shouldn't obstruct the terrestrial view of the antenna at all. So the Alpha Rack is a dual wall construction. You've got your inner groove tech, which is this piece here. It's got the factory installed rib nuts on it. And then you've got your outer armor. The groove tech is what actually attaches to the load bars anchored to the vehicle already. And when you install them, the large protrusion on the rib nut should face the inside of the vehicle. So let's go put the groove tech and attach it to the load bars. The groove tech's going to align just about where I've got it sitting right now. Not every slot will attach to a load bar. I'm going to start in the rear. It's the second slot from the rear goes to the rear load bar. And we've still got these loose enough we can adjust everything. So I just want to line up that slot. You're going to start all your hardware by hand. You'll get everything squared in place and then you'll come back and tighten everything up. So. Once you've got all four load bars started, slide the groove tech all the way backwards until the load bars lock out in the slots. They should be at the forwardmost position and then tighten them up with a 5.30 seconds out. Now I've got all four on the driver's side done. We're gonna do the exact same thing on the passenger side of the truck with the other piece of groove tech. Now we're ready to drop in the rest of the load bars. The front and rear load bar will attach to the rack assembly with hex nuts. The ones throughout the middle will use the same button head bolts as the other load bars that you've already installed. The rear load bar on the Alpha Rack can mount horizontally like the rest of them along this top slot, or you can flip it vertically in the rear and use this hole in the rear of the top slot. If you mount it vertically like that, you can use this machine rectangle here to pass wires through from one side to the other. The benefit would be a vertical load bar has less deflection, so if you're loading big heavy stuff at the rear of the rack, we recommend that you would run it vertically. We're gonna do it horizontally to match the rest of them on this truck. Just like the rear load bar, the front load bar can be ran horizontally or vertically. We give you four different vertical positions so that you can space the load bar to dial in the lighting that you may be installing on your rack. We're gonna install this one horizontally and we're gonna put it all the way back so that there's no crossbar sitting over top of the factory antenna obstructing the GPS signal. Once you've got all your load bars in, next you'll want to use a tape measure and measure the distance from each load bar clamp to the outside of your groove tech at all four locations on both sides of the truck. That's how we're going to make sure that the rack is even from left to right, driver to passenger. So I'm going to measure this and I've got three and a quarter. So I want to go measure the other side, make sure I have that three and a quarter. If I don't, I want to do the, the division and then slide it back and forth until it's even. Once it's done, I'll tighten up all of these bolts. And I'm gonna repeat that process at all four locations on both sides of the rack. I've got all the load bar clamps in place and tightened up. Now I'm gonna use a pair of half inch wrenches and I wanna tighten up the foot bolts. You'll have two at each location, so there are 16 total. Like we said earlier in the video, if you have an alpha rack, this is gonna be half inch hardware, so you need half inch wrenches. If you've got a Bravo rack, this part's gonna be five millimeter Allen and 13 millimeter wrench. The windscreen for your Alpha rack attaches to the very front of your groove tech in the two machined holes. You line up the two holes in the flange of your windscreen to the two holes in the groove tech and the, the windscreen does sit on the inside. The next step is to attach your armor to your groove tech. The armor will attach to these gold colored rib nuts that are installed across the groove tech from front to rear. You'll only use the front location and the rear location. These middle holes will be for your grab handles. If you're installing the optional seam pods, you'll wanna punch these out before you put this on the truck. We've tied up the handles already if you haven't tied your handles before, go watch our video on how to tie handles that Drew did. It explains exactly how to get from all the pieces and parts to this. We're ready to attach it to the groove tech now. It's gonna pass through the armor 
with the longer 55 mil bolts. Now you take your plastic spacer. That spacer should sit between the back of the handle and the armor. Line it up, pass it through the hole, and then install the next spacer between the armor and the groove tack. Now put the other three handles on and you are done. <laughs>